Prayer is a spiritual thing, and it aids in the renewing of your mind and spirit. So when you come before the Lord in prayer, it must be heartfelt, and you must pray in the spirit. Carnal prayer is vain prayer and is of no use or consequence to you. True prayer is not coming to the Lord with a list of things you want or only praying in an emergency when you need him. True prayer is not, oh, Lord, bless me with this new job or this new house or even praying for financial blessings. True, heartfelt, spirit-filled prayer is asking the Lord what he wants from you. Lord, what am I lacking? What do I need to improve on? How can I be a better servant for you? Lord, let your will be done in me and through me at all times and not my own. Prayer is about your personal quiet time with the Lord to seek him, pour your heart out to him, and strive to get closer and nearer to him. During my prayer and supplication to the Lord, I begin with the Lord's Prayer. The most important area of prayer is repentance. Be sure to ask for forgiveness and remission of your sins you've committed knowingly and unknowingly. Also, just as scriptures say, So you may also want to ask for the remission of the sins of your spouse, your children, and of course, it is very important every day to ask forgiveness and remission of the sins of your fathers and forefathers, going back to the third and fourth generations. This step is very important to prevent the iniquities of your bloodline or ancestry to come down over you or your children or bring curses over yourself or your children. It's important for both you and your spouse to daily remit the sins of both your ancestry or bloodline. The next step would be praying for the renewing within you of a right spirit and a sound mind and asking for the purifying of your spirit, heart, conscious and subconscious mind. This renewing is important because throughout the day, these areas within you are susceptible to outside influences that come in and pollute them. Many would be astonished to know the things your subconscious mind is taking in throughout the day without you even realizing it. This negative polluting of your mind is why sometimes obscene, sinful, or ungodly thoughts pop up in your mind out of nowhere that you didn't welcome in or want there. So it is very important in prayer to ask for the cleansing and purifying of your heart, spirit, conscious, and subconscious mind. Another very important area of prayer is praying for spiritual covering, protection, and pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over you, your family, and any important areas of your lives that are susceptible to constant demonic attacks. You may begin this area by praying for any curses to be broken by the power in the blood of Jesus, then praying that no weapon formed against you or your family prosper, but be sent back 100-fold against the kingdom of darkness. Follow up by pleading the blood. For example, you may want to pray for the covering and protection of the blood over you, your family, your marriage, your home, finances, jobs, spiritually, physically, over the health of you and your family. Whatever areas of your life that hold significant importance, plead the blood over those areas. Also, you may want to pray that any demons or evil spirits be cast out of your home and pray that the peace and spirit of God be retained within your family and within your home. Also, sometimes you may notice people you come across or work with, work with on the job who constantly nag you, mock you, or try and hinder your progress spiritually or physically. This happens to us as Christians sometimes because non-believers or those outside of the body of Christ are many times in demonic bondage through open door sins they have committed and they don't even realize it. But the demons in them will often discern the spirit of God in you. 
so they will target you and get the person they are inhabiting to throw negativity your way to frustrate and distract you or cast a stumbling block in your way. This sort of thing occurs because demons hate anybody walking in the light and Holy Spirit of God. But when and if this type of demonic oppression happens to you as a Christian, fight against this demon through spiritual warfare prayer by praying that the Lord send back the attack sent against you and subdue your enemies round about you. Trust me, this type of spiritual warfare praying actually works. My husband at one point was dealing with racial discrimination from his supervisor, and he would always give him a hard time for no reason. So I got on my knees and prayed that my husband's enemies would be subdued round about him. And after that, the Lord dealt with the guy and my husband didn't have problems from him anymore. As Christians, we must understand the power of spiritual warfare. We don't have to always submit ourselves to demonic oppression. Sometimes we need to gird up in the armor of God and fight back in the spirit against this demonic oppression over us. But getting back on track, the next area of prayer. This area of prayer is very important also. This aids in your humbling and contentedness when you take a minute to reflect on how good Jesus Christ is and giving him praise and thanks for not just the bit big things, but the things many of us take for granted or don't consider to give thanks for. Such as, of course, giving thanks, thanks for his blood shed, for the remission of our sins, and for forgiveness, for his continual love, grace, mercy over you and your family, thanking him for his Holy Spirit, for his word, for his faithfulness towards you, even when you don't deserve it, for his patience with you, for making himself known unto you and drawing you closer to him, for the honor of him allowing you to serve him and be your Lord and Savior, for Jesus Christ blessing you 24-7 with not just your wants, but providing your needs also. Also, thanking him for constantly making a way out of no way for you. An important part that many of us forget as Christians is his continual and daily covering and protection over us. As Christians, do you know how important of a target of hatred you are of Satan's and the kingdom of darkness? Satan wants nothing more than to completely and utterly destroy you, kill you, and just devour you to pieces because Jesus Christ lives in you. But you know what? They aren't able to because Jesus Christ's hand of protection is so strong over you that he won't allow it. So take the time and thank the Lord for his continual supernatural protection he places over you continually and daily. Now, moving on to the next area of prayer. Now, this area of prayer is very, very important for our spiritual growth and maturing as servants of Christ Jesus. However, unfortunately, many people use this area to come to the Lord with a prayer list of their wants, desires, goals, and ambitions they have thought up for themselves. But if this is you, stop it now. This is not true prayer. This is praying in vain because it doesn't matter how deeply or how much you pray and ask for things you want and desire. If it's not in God's will and if it's no and if it's not beneficial to your spiritual growth, you shall not receive it, whatever it may be. True discipleship praying is seeking the Lord's will for you, praying that your spirit, soul and body be in daily and continual submission to the will and Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Praying that the Lord magnify his spirit within you, strengthen you spiritually, and help you to continue to press forward on the straight and narrow path. Because trust me, the higher you go, the harder it gets, the more focus and discipline it takes to continue pushing forward. It begins to require more dedication, more sacrifices you will have to make, and more fruits of the spirit being produced through you. So with that being said, these are the things you will need to be praying for and seeking if you desire to become a disciple. You must be focused on 
praying for and seeking spiritual things, not vanity or worldly unimportant things. In true discipleship prayer, it's okay to ask for some things that you desire in your heart, but keep them to the very minimum. And when you ask, make sure to lead with, Lord, if it be in your will, may you bless me with such and such. Because remember, true discipleship prayer is about praying in the spirit and seeking the will of Jesus Christ for you and not your own. Also, we must always keep in mind that Jesus Christ already knows our heart's desires, our wants, and our needs, and he will provide them and bless you as he sees fit. So you must not let your prayer time be consumed with what you want for yourself. Keep it spiritually centered, not carnal. True discipleship prayer is selfless prayer and constantly seeking spiritual things that will contribute to your growth and maturity as a servant of Jesus Christ. Pray and ask the Lord to reveal to you areas within you or without that you need to get rid of or improve on. Pray that the Lord mold you and shape you into a pure and holy vessel that he can use, tried and true. Pray that the Lord's will always be done in you and through you. Pray that the Lord speak to you, lead you, and guide your footsteps in the direction he wants you to go. Pray that the Lord keep you focused on him and his will at all times, no matter what it takes to keep your attention. Pray for gifts of the spirit that you feel you are lacking in. Because just as the scriptures say, So, brethren, pray and ask the Lord for the things you want more of spiritually. The Lord will honor this desire and hunger in you to excel spiritually for the furthering of his kingdom. If your faith is weak, pray that it be strengthened. Pray for faith that can move mountains. If you have demons of greed, pride, selfishness, anger, anything ungodly in you, pray and fast and ask the Lord to release these demons. Pray to be exorcised of the spiritually hindering demons that may be within you. If you feel you lack humbleness and humility, pray that the Lord abase you to complete humility and humbleness. Wives, if you have trouble with submission to your husband's authority and headship over you, pray that the Lord help you to be a humble, submissive wife and rebuke and cast out that Jezebel demon that wants you to demasculate your husband and usurp the position of authority and headship that the Lord ordained to the man. If you're a husband and you struggle with an Ahab spirit that refuses to take the lead and authority within your home and continually give your wife the leadership role and authority within the home, pray and ask that the Lord cast out the Ahab demon within you and transform you into a strong, godly man and leader of your household. Pray and ask the Lord to teach you how to lead your family in a godly way, reflecting the character of Jesus Christ and displaying proper headship for your wife and children. Pray and ask the Lord to strengthen you to hold your family together in the divine ordained order as the stronger vessel. Pray for the love of Christ in your heart to help you to love your wife like Christ loves the church. Also, pray for freedom from bondage through sin. If your discernment is lacking, pray for the Lord to increase your discernment of spirits and the ability to discern what is of God and what is of Satan. If you are one who seeks truth, pray that the Lord reveal knowledge, wisdom, truth, and the mysteries of God unto you. Brethren, this is what true discipleship prayer is all about. It's about seeking and developing a passion and yearning for the things of God, spiritual things, It's about constant examination of one's inner man and seeking what you can do to perfect it in a way that is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. You must constantly seek and pray on how to be a better servant for him. The areas you need to improve in and ask for understanding and revelation of his will for you and for your life. It's all about seeking and desiring to achieve the purpose for which he created you for. True prayer is not all about what you want, but what the Lord wants from you or for you. Another very important area of prayer 
is to keep your spouses, your children, and families lifted up in prayer. Praying daily over your marriage is very important. Asking for curses to be broken over your marriage by the blood of Jesus. Praying that God blesses your union, strengthens your union to be unbreakable. Praying that any damaged or broken areas of your marriage be revealed and mended. Praying that the Lord maintain and strengthen you and your spouse's bond and connection. Also, praying that your marriage remain in divine order outlined by the Lord in his word, which is Jesus Christ first, the husband next, who holds the masculine authority and headship in the family, then the wife who must support her husband, be there for him spiritually, physically, and in every way possible, keeping him lifted up in prayer and humbling and submitting to his authority. And last but not least are the kids whom both parents should always keep lifted up in prayer. Praying daily for the remission of their sins, praying for demons to be cast out of them, curses to be broken from over their lives, praying that they be filled with the Holy Spirit, covered in the blood, dedicate them to the Lord and pray his will be done in and through them. Also, pray that the Lord instill the spirit of wisdom in them to walk in his word and in his will. All of these areas of prayer are very important, and they require special attention, and none should be left undone. As Christians, prayer is one of the most powerful tools we have, but we must begin using it properly in a way that is pleasing and acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Prayer is a very important part of discipleship, which you will need to utilize and remain faithful and devoted to in order to grow to spiritual maturity and learn to become a fisher of men, walking and operating through the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. May the peace and spirit of the Lord be with you. God bless.